was probably about 18 inches across, kind of a deep bowl. And uh, she took it and she, I, I asked her about a few years later, like, do you still have that basket I sold you? And she, and she said, I don't really want to talk about it. And I said, what, what do you mean? She said, I gave it to my mother. She said, my mother uh, planted a ficus tree in it. <laughs> And here I've got one of the, this is my, you're my bucket list. I got a bucket list. Michael Haskell <laughs> is on the bucket list. <laughs> and I've got yeah. Michael here. Michael is in Santa, he lives in Santa Barbara and he's had a shop there. So how long have you had a shop in Santa Barbara? I opened my shop in 1969. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what, you don't look old enough to have opened it in 69. <laughs> well, I looked a lot different then. <laughs> I remember you. Yeah. I've known you 30 years. So tell me, Michael. Well, because I don't really know, but did you grow up in Southern California? I did. Yeah, I grew up in, in Santa Barbara, basically. My my family had been there for like three generations before me. And, and Three? Wow. Yeah, so yeah. when did they come in? When did they the first Haskells hit the... Late 1800s, yeah. Wow. And there was nothing then, right? That was just farmland. It was land, just a, much? It, you know, it, yeah. We, in fact, my, my family, we had a farm and a, a cattle ranch there in and Santa how Barbara. long did they keep that? How long did your that would have been your great grandfather? My yeah, my my grandfather um, had a place called Yankee Farm. Mm -hmm. We had horses and chickens and everything else. You'd do you have photos of any of that? I just oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I do, I do. And then we had a cattle ranch for a long time, and we sold that in like the eighties. Uh huh. Yeah. So and then so your dad, what did he do? My father was a. Um, he was a civil engineer, but he had a he had a construction company, and which he had inherited from my grandfather, who was doing that before. It was a called Western Motor, Motor Transport, and it was a it was kind of a trucking firm, and they had those old fashioned trucks and stuff. And, and was he making like re, uh, commercial real estate for that kind of stuff, or what was he doing? Is it all trucking or? Yeah, trucking and and you know just. Do, with some farming and ranching. Uh -huh. So when you grew up as a kid, were you doing that kind of stuff? Were you farming and yeah, ranching? Yeah, yeah. I I took care of the ranch. I, uh -huh. I was I lived out of, by myself on the ranch for a while. And when you were a kid, like young kid. Well, when I when I was in my teens, late teens, I, uh -huh. I was take, kind of taking care of the ranch, living out there by myself. It was kind of and that's in Santa Barbara. Yeah, it was, was out in the sticks. It yeah. was you know really <laughs> you know out kind of. Uh, north of Santa Barbara. And how did you go to school when you were doing that? Well, I I, I would drive myself to school. That at that point, I was going to art school, and and um, we had it when I was in high school too. But I lived at our house uh -huh. on Yankee Farm in Santa Barbara. So and so, did you have like this um, interest in art from a very young age, like you know, five, six, seven kind of thing? I, I did. Yeah, my mother was very into art and things like that and and we had um we had indian things around the house you know native american things rugs and baskets and all kinds of stuff and, and whose was that who influence was that was that just stuff that had kind of come down through the generations yeah kind of my my family's actually um half my family's from tucson yeah i knew that actually yeah yeah i want to get into that part too and um so we had things we gathered here and there and my mother used to like to antique around and she bought things from antique shops and estate sales and that sort of thing and, mm -hmm. and i i kind of uh, when i was still in high school i started buying you know indian material, indian material and and really started snooping around and uh -huh. looking and for stuff. so what kind of stuff would you were you dealing in when you were in high school Was i like i bought i bought rugs and baskets and i'd buy jewelry and beadwork and whatever i could find and i uh -huh. You know, I, I obviously didn't know much at the start. And right. I kind of got a little smarter as I went along, uh -huh. hopefully. And do you remember the first thing you purchased? Uh, for real was money? The first, <laughs> thing, the first thing I bought for real money is I bought a little collection of beadwork. And there's a, um, I bought like four Lakota items. There was a um, Lakota cradle. There was a, a beaded vest. And in fact, I've got pictures of myself wearing that beaded vest. Uh -huh. you know, I thought and how old were cool. you at this time? I think I was about 18, something okay. like that. So 17, probably. Right, kind of as a senior in high school, you were starting. Yeah, I was starting. Yeah. yeah. 
And you, but you were doing an art school at that same time? Uh, that? Not at that time. I, I, I went to art school later. Okay. I went to Colorado school. for a while, and I, I uh, um, lived in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and went to college there for a while, and, and, and mostly skied. Yeah, and, and that and was, and that's what you were fly but, fished. And, yeah. you know? <laughs> and that was, and that was an actual art school you were in. The art. Yeah, uh-huh. it's now the Colorado Mountain College, it's okay. the State College of Colorado. But uh, so you it, bought this little beaded, these bead the vest and the Lakota stuff. And you're 18, and what year would have that been? Um, that would have probably been about 64, 65. Yeah, so the Vietnam War is just starting to kind of. Mm-hmm crank in yeah uh, that, that time. was that was definitely the vietnam era yeah, yeah for sure and so you went to school so you didn't have to go to vietnam then but you must have had to deal with it at some point i w- I, I was i went into the air force for a couple of years okay and so yeah. when was that um that was uh that would have been probably about um 66 60 yeah 66 or 67 yeah so you're about 21 yeah, I was about 21. And, and so I, did you volunteer or did you... Yeah, I, I volunteered. Yeah. Yeah. Some of my friends had volunteered and and it was just sort of, I kind of felt bad about them going and me staying, so I uh-huh. volunteered. And I was a medic in the Air Force. So yeah. what does a medic in the Air Force do? Do they hand... Where, where, so where were you? Were you in Vietnam? I never went to Vietnam. Yeah. I, it... it I always thought it, I was going to be there, but sure, I wasn't. Sure, you did think that. And yeah. I, I ended up going to Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is close to my home in Santa Barbara. And uh, they kind of asked me about my background. I had gone to tech, technical school in Texas, and they asked me about my background. And and ranching was part of it, and animals and everything. Right. So they put me, uh, they trained me how to be a field medic and all that kind of stuff. But I ended up taking care of animals and, and inspecting food. Oh, that's, well, that's actually, it was a pretty good gig. Yeah. No, that, <laughs> <laughs> and so you would, what would you do with the animals too? Were you like a, if they were sick kind of thing or just, um, yeah, well we, uh, at Van for Vandenberg air force base, we had a lot of guard dogs. We took care of them yeah. and people would bring their animals in and we'd, deal with rabid skunks and yeah. you know <laughs> whatever and so you do that for two years yeah and then you're then you're done in 68 yeah or so mm-hmm. right which is really still the height of the vietnam war so you're probably thrilled to have gone you d- did your service and we're done y- yeah I, w- I, I was done um and then what did your folks that, think about that when you went when they when you upped for it well it was uh it, they were they had real mixed feelings i had a couple friends that that died in the vietnam war right about the time i went in and mm. so they were they were a little nervous about it and and, uh, and is that what kind of pushed you cuz your friends got killed in there? well uh after i after i'd gotten out of boot camp um I actually gave one of my friends a ride to the uh, to be shipped out and and Two weeks later, he died in Vietnam. Mm. You know. Was he a Marine? Or? He was a Marine. Yeah, that'll do yeah. it. Steve Neal. Yeah. yeah. He was a good friend of mine. Surfer yeah. f- friend, you know, we surfed together. Yeah. And, and did you do that a lot when you were a kid? Did you surf a lot? I, I grew up surfing since I was like 10 years yeah. old. You and still surf? I still surf. I yeah. still surf. And um, I'm slowing down a bit. Uh-huh. You know? but the back kind of tells me no, but yeah. I, but I still want to do it. Go. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. It. yeah. So you get out of Nam. Yeah, or not Nam, Vietnam, yeah, you know, Vietnam Vietnam time. Yeah. yeah, but it was all it was all that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's sixty eight. And then you go have you do you go back to school at that point or you go this is I I, 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 I was in art school yeah. and I, I got a one art a uh, scholarship to art school and I was I was a painter and um I did it until I fulfilled my my two years of art school and but in the whole time I was doing that I was also messing around with the Indian native stuff, stuff. Yeah, yeah so you're buying and selling yeah I was and yeah. had you at this point because you're a young kid you're 22 or so yeah you're you, are you thinking this could be a job or a profession um you know I I at some point I sold a couple things that I bought and mm-hmm. I thought this is a lot easier money than mm-hmm. 
working construction, yeah. which I had done before, right. and and, and I, I I didn't have a good feeling about making it as an artist. Yeah. You know, like I, I mean, that's one tenth of one percent to ever right. do anything. You yeah. know, so I just uh, and I love the stuff, and that's when I really started getting out and, and traveling around and looking for stuff and going to the Navajo reservation and it was yeah and where do you think that love came from what do you think it was the objects around you and that kind of thing what was it? I, I love the objects I mean I would buy these things that I barely knew what they were but I would just sit there and and uh, study them for you know hours you know mm-hmm. and read everything I could about them and and you know a lot about uh, jewelry. That's kind of one of your areas. That was one of my things. I, 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 I did a lot with jewelry, and I, I had a couple of um, mentors that were really helpful to me. Yeah, who were they? Uh, one of my biggest mentors was a guy named Don Percival. You probably know who yeah, he is. Yeah, I know him very well. He's a he painter. Was, he was a painter. Yeah, he knew Maynard Dixon very well. And I he owned met his Don, house, actually. I, I met Maynard Dixon, too. And Don was a good friend of Maynard's, and yeah. they were involved in the Museum of Northern Arizona. And um, so uh, Don lived in Santa Barbara at that time. He, yes. he used to live in Tucson. Yeah, but, he owned Dixon's um, house. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, he came into my shop one day, and he, we started talking, and it's obvious that he knew a lot more than I did. Mm-hmm. And, so, and so, and your shop opened in 69? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I'll get back to, but I'll, yeah. So he comes in and this is early seventies kind of thing or? Yeah. He was this real interesting guy, impressive looking man. And, uh-huh. and he was English by birth, but he'd been in this country for many years and he'd, he'd been all over the Southwest and, painted and drawn the southwest and did a book called the uh, navajo sketchbook yeah, i believe uh, it was yeah i found it and um so he he was kind of my mentor and he'd have me over for drinks like you know maybe every two weeks you know and we'd talk and talk and he spoke a bit of navajo and he'd tell me a lot of stuff you know about the language and all that kind of thing and so, had you been out to the res yet at that time uh yeah i had been i'd taken myself out there and I, my parents had taken me out there as a kid because we'd we go to visit my grandparents in in, in Tucson, mm-hmm. and they had stuff in their house, Indian stuff. This and was your mom's side. This was my dad's side. It was yeah. your dad's side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so Percival, did he talk about Dixon at all? Uh, Do you remember? Yeah, he talked about him, and and you know. What do you have to say about him? Do you remember? Well, he just he was the he was the man. You yeah. Know? He just knew everything about this stuff, and he had things. I bought a few things from him, and and. And uh, yeah, really interesting guy. And so Percival is, um, he's a really good painter. Did you ever get any of his artwork? Uh, yeah, I have had, yeah, yeah, I have had. And uh, uh, I, yeah, I think he's a great painter. And I, I think yeah. he he was influenced some, some by Dixon too. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Dixon took, Percival, it was maybe like you worked at Percival. I mean, he was his mentor. Yeah. He really, he thought everything about Dixon, I think. So. Right. And mm-hmm. then Percival was also real good friends with Clay Lockett. Yes, you know, who and, also was a good friend of Dixon. Yeah. And so it was a, um, it was a, a good, good learning process. And did you get to meet Clay and know Clay at all? Yeah, I met Clay. Yep. And was he a mentor as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would he think was, he would He was be. very yeah. open, you know, and and helpful that was kind of just the way he was and and yeah clay lockett's one of the earliest you know for those out there uh indian art dealers he knew dixon he did archaeological digs he ran the museum of northern arizona as well he lived in tucson as well yeah and so what kind of guy was he like um just kind of a good guy you know just very open and sharing and, and happy to you know uh Read his knowledge and um, and where was he? Was he in Tucson at that point, or was he still I, I, when I flag? when I met him? He was in Flagstaff. He was still up in Flag. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and then there was, you know, when we were in Tucson, I'd go to Tom Body's shop sure. there and and look around and buy stuff occasionally. I've heard my, great things about Tom. Yeah, he had he he was you know way ahead of his time. And, yeah. And, I bought, you know, he'd have, you never would know what he'd have there. He has some really wonderful things. And were you focused in at that point early on 
in older material or yes. you, strictly you write to the older material? You write, I did. I didn't really do much with modern stuff. Yeah. Why I, do you think that is that you gravitated to that? It's just, I just, I, I'm, I'm really interested in history yeah, and okay, I, I is. like, you know, the process of, uh, I read a lot about history and, and it was just part of who I am. Yeah. yeah. And it, allows you to have knowledge that other people don't too yeah and i i I, you know at that time there now there's a book on everything you know you can find a book about and and it was really hard to find or a video good information (laughs) yeah or videotape or youtube uh but but now there's uh you know there's books about everything and and um, so i would like read all these books from start to you know uh otis t mason and all these early writers and and kind of memorize the books, mm-hmm. and it was, and then at that time they started to do some some of these so-called Indian shows, you know, where a lot of people would get together. There was a one called the um, Great Western in Los Angeles, where. And you met Kim Martindale. He came because we talked yesterday. Yes, and he came in. He reminded me that he had come in came into your shop and that was one of the things that really got him excited i think he said it was about the time you opened your shop yeah maybe. he was he was he was a young kid how I mean, old was he do you remember like a, oh he was like 14 or yeah or something. like 13 yeah. 14 yeah. you know when he came in and he was all you know excited about stuff and just at that age and, and uh, i ended up giving him a bunch of stuff funky stuff I had around there, which he tr- treasured, you yeah. know, <laughs> the old broken arrowheads yeah. and stuff like that. And it was just a... And did you know that was he was going to be somebody that he's going to make this as his profession, do you think? It's, it, he certainly had the interest. Yeah. You know, he was really into it. Yeah. And so how did you decide you were going to open a shop in 69? I mean, um, that was a hot time for it, Indian material, it, for My sure. timing was really good. Yeah, I, mean, that was um, right I was effort. really fortunate. Yeah. I am... Um, I, I I had some stuff. I had a lot of rugs and stuff like that that I just, you know, in those days, like in the, the late 60s and early 70s, things were really inexpensive. And I just, friends of my parents had things and they'd even give me things, right. you know, you're interested in this? Here, take this old basket. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. And uh, so, and th- at that point, I, I um, and I would put ads in the paper and buy things and I would put an ad in the paper and I'd get um, calls till I filled up a whole sheet of paper and then I knew I didn't have enough money to finish the... Right. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. So it was... Uh, uh, and then I I, uh, I was selling a lot of jewelry, as you know, it was like the 60s and 70s right. and all the hippies wanted their jewelry and, right. you know, and, the, and it was... Style-wise, it was a real... Yeah, how long was time. your hair at that time? Uh... It started out short, but it got kind of got down to here yeah, at some okay, point. So yeah. For those who are just listening, we're talking shoulder length. Yeah, I would, I'd like to see those early photos. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there's a few of those online. Yeah, that that's cool. People can see. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I started going to the reservation, and I. And what would you would you look for old material? The yeah. Old pond and go to the pond. Uh, old pond basically because there wasn't much other stuff. You find some things, but. There was a lot of pond in those days, right. you know, and the pond system was in, was, was full blown. It was really a way of life for those people, you know, and it was, I think, and and, and a lot of people would say that it, it was probably a very functional system for them, mm-hmm. you know, it was like. And so you would go into like Richardson's and Gallup and go, or I, would you go on up? I to went the, up on the reservation yeah. a lot. I did. I would go to Gallup occasionally, but I, like I, Tuba Tony. City was yeah. my. I, I knew the trader place. there, yeah. and, and um, I'd show up, and he had a trailer out and back, and he'd say, spend the night, and in the morning we'll go in, and that's the day the pond comes out. Yeah. And it was, you know, I'd before one of those trips, I, I'd be so excited I couldn't even sleep yeah. because it was just such a thrill, thrilling experience. And, and we'd buy pond. I'd buy a grocery bag full of pond, yeah. you know, and... and and what was his name, the trader? Do you remember his name? His name was, his name was Noel, as I recall. And um, he had been an old, from an old trading family there. Uh-huh. And, and uh, you know, the, a lot of the things that came out at that time were you'd find some early stuff, you know, some of the early coin silver and yeah. stuff like that. But a lot of 
a lot of it was uh, Zuni style jewelry was very popular with the Navajo at that time, and mm -hmm. there was there was um, a lot of cluster work, you know, and uh, still a lot of uh, you know nugget or what they call today tab necklaces. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of those, and some were really old and great. And sometimes you get an old concho belt, you know, or an old bridle, or you know, it was just. And you wouldn't go go and get any like more contemporary squash because those were selling just as fast as you could get them. They were. They? I I did I did for a while. I I went to Gallup a couple of times and I bought things from like Tobe Turpin and stuff yeah. like that. But I found that I could buy enough stuff that I really liked. Uh, even in Santa Barbara, you know, people would just bring me. Yeah, there wasn't anybody their there. Their collections, and then Don Percival uh, came to my shop one time and he said. Uh, come over to the house and have a drink. And we're like he always did, and, and we're sitting there. He goes, you know, I, I've got some things I want to show you. And he never showed. I didn't know he had a collection. Mm. I didn't know anything. And he he took me into a bedroom, and, and it was just full of full of stuff. There was everything more than two hundred ingot bracelets. Oh there was you know five or six bridles, concho belts. Yeah. All this stuff he had collected early on. Yeah, and it, it was very good things, and and kachinas, and just all kinds of things, you know. And he said, um, you know, I have all this stuff, and I don't know what to do with it. He was, at that time, I'm pretty sure he knew he was, his life was coming I mean, to he, an end, yeah. and he had some, I think it was cancer, and and he said, I want you to buy all this stuff just before. Give me a price and be fair with me, and you can take it away. And so I was kind of a little nervous because I knew there was probably at that time forty or fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff there, and I probably had like uh, three thousand dollars in my checking account. <laughs> and so, how, how old were you at this? Like thirty, maybe? Yeah, I was. I, I was. That would have been. I would have been twenty six, probably, yeah, or something yeah, like that's that. A, yeah, that's a lot of money yeah, for a kid. Yeah, and. And even though it was going very well in the business, you you tend to spend faster than you mm. sell sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know. So anyway, I said, well, I, I you know, I'm of thirty thousand, but I've got to see if I can borrow the money from my dad. Right. And I, my dad loaned me the money, and I. Loved and what did your dad think about what you're doing going into? He this? thought I was completely out of my mind at I first, bet. and then and then he saw me pulling off a few deals. And he was all behind me. Uh -huh. And then uh, later, a um, few years after that, it, I I had the opportunity to go look at the C.G. Wallace collection. Mm -hmm. And and for those people who don't know, C.G. Wallace was this unbelievable trader that came into into Gallup in 1918, and then went up to the Zuni Reservation, and right. he was the guy. He, yeah. And he kind of changed the whole yeah. you know program out yeah. there. And, and um was cg still around at this time when you yeah he was still there I, I met him in the de Hanzo motel in, in albuquerque yeah he owned that one right? he owned yeah. it yeah. yeah and all his stuff was there yeah and it was mind-boggling and he spent the whole day with me and oh i was this kind of young 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 haired long-haired yeah guy and 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 what year would have this been is this like uh it was early be, 70s? just before it was yeah it was the early 70s it was before the uh the Sotheby's auction, yeah, and yeah. and the stuff was for and that was seventy six, I think maybe. Yeah, I think it was seventy six. Yeah. I have the catalog, yeah. but I, I think it was seventy six. And he, um, he w he was wanting to sell the collection, hmm. and again, my dad said, "Well, I'll help you," but um, he had uh, he I think he wanted at that time two hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah. for it. Wow, which is yeah nothing now, and and. Um, but, you know, I was looking at all this fabulous Zuni stuff and I just, I didn't know enough about the Zuni stuff or, or really, how, right. am I ever going to get my money out of this stuff right. or get my money back to my dad for this right. stuff? Right. That's a big deal to do that. It was, but it was an incredible education and, and my dad agreed to, you know, put the money together for me. Wow. To, to, to buy it, yeah. and then there was a guy in the middle that was kind of a broker that yeah. had done the thing, and he said, well, yeah, okay, but my commission's 20%. And I was like, nah, I lost interest, and yeah. 
I didn't want to get so complicated. And, and we didn't do it. And then, you know, we all know, all of us in this business know what happened at that And so auction. was it that all that collection was what ended up at Sotheby's and got sold? Yeah. Yeah, or part of it probably went to the Herd Museum collection as yeah, well. Yeah, it got, I, I think part of it, yeah, the, I, the Herd got a, yeah. a, a big chunk of so it. So in some ways... The fact that it went through that way and got such big numbers, it sold for so much money. You know, it, it in, indirectly it helped everyone, including yourself. It I did. Think. It did. It changed. It completely changed the business. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have regrets that you didn't buy it? Um, of course. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> I was I was being cautious. And, yeah. And you were still, again, you were were you even thirty then? No, I was I was younger than thirty. Wow. I, I yeah, remember. I understand in, it. In seventy. Well, I'd have to figure it out. And so what did your dad say guy. when I go, you said, well, I just don't want to do it. I don't yeah, know. I, I wasn't comfortable. It was no precedent for it. Yeah, no. You know, and so it was well, I get very it. risky, you know. It was very risky. Yeah, but I, but it was a great opportunity to sit with CG and, yeah. and go over stuff and just... Yeah, what was he like? He was real open, uh, nice guy, you know. We had lunch there. At and how place. old was he? He was fairly old at that yeah, time, Yeah, I right? think he was probably, um, I'm guessing now, it's been so long, but I, I'm guessing he was maybe 80. Yeah, or, I would yeah. think so. Yeah. And so we... Did he we, clearly love the material, do you think? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And he was, you know, I mean, he he knew all the the artists and and knew their families and... Right. And... and Knew everything. Yeah, that's fun when you get to sit with somebody of that right, and they know it all, and 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 you know they know it all, exactly. (laughs) And he, uh, you know, he supplied all the great turquoise that people use, Likia, and and, you know, Teddy Wiaki, and all those people. Yeah, no, he got great turquoise. You know, number eight spider web and blue gem and stuff that not just every artist could get at that time. So. You think the broker learned anything because he lost his twenty percent? Oh, I think he was just—he was a money guy, and he, he wanted, didn't even care. Yeah, he probably would have liked to got, have gotten it, yeah. but it uh-huh. just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think there's a lesson in that for the, all those people who are trying to broker things sometimes. Yeah. You know, ten exactly. percent would have been. Yeah, twenty it, grand. It, it probably would have happened. Yeah. Five or ten percent, but yeah. it just was yeah. too big of a chunk. Of that would have been one of the largest, if not the largest, deal of that ever. Probably. Yeah, I, I think so. It, yeah, it was a huge I, deal at that time. Yeah, you know, for was, especially for a twenty-year-old kid. Yeah, yeah and th- things really weren't that expensive still. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was. And when it sold at auction, I'm sure you were very, very aware of it. I was. Did you buy anything? I I didn't I didn't even go to the auction. Um, friends of mine went, and I have bought things since. I recently bought a. Um, a Kate Doe, a Bogard that was a uh, part of it. Uh, yeah, made by uh, um, Plus you or something. No, it was made by um, Juan de Dios. Oh, Juan de Dios. Uh, and, and and it was in the catalog. It was made in 1925. It's a kind of an iconic uh, Bogard that has uh, spiny oyster hands facing oh, yeah, each other. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, one. we know it, right? Yeah, like yeah. part of it. Right? I've got. I have it now. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. And so the this, the gallery that you start is it in the same place it is now? Is it very same? close to where I am now? Yeah, yeah, same. in Montecito, California. And how long have you been in that one that you're in now? Uh, I think about twenty years now. Yeah, yeah. I moved moved around. You know, I, I was in downtown Santa Barbara for a while. And, and you, but you've always stayed in that area. In I the have Santa Barbara, area, right? Yeah, I've, I've I've I stayed there for a long time. I you know I spent a couple of years in Colorado and, and Santa Barbara. I, I didn't know that. When was that? That was I went to college there. Oh, you went to college. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I thought you meant after you started your business. No, you know? no, no. I I was always in, since I started started my business. I, I, you know, I was I've been basically lived in, lived in Santa Barbara, although I traveled in Mexico and Peru and all over. And yeah. What? Spent, what? Yeah. And let's talk about that actually, because you became you're known for your Native American material. Mm-hmm. You're an expert in this. You're an expert in silver, but. At some point, you go. I like Hispanic furniture because you came, became the guy. Yeah, I, I, I really loved. Still, you know, probably are the guy. Spanish actually. colonial stuff. Yeah. you know, and um, I, I made a couple of trips to Mexico. I have relatives in Mexico. Part of my Tucson family um, moved to Mexico mm. to Guadalajara, and I and I uh, went down and would stay with my aunt, and I started buying things down there, and then um, I think it was about. 
early 80s, I went to Peru, and that was a real eye-opener. And I and was that to buy material? I went to buy, yeah. yeah. I, I went to learn about Peru, but right. I I went to antique dealers, and there was all this amazing stuff available, right. very inexpensive, and I just... And you were primarily interested in furniture and some of the religious Furniture, things. silver, yeah. you know, religious stuff. Yeah. Um, and I started buying what I could, and I made many trips there, and... I was I was sort of the only guy bringing things out of Peru at that time. And, and what I, year would have that been? Uh, I think it was maybe eighty two. You know. And would you just work strictly through the furniture dealers there, or would you literally go to some? Yeah, of the I Andes? had I had um, I had some friends there, there were some friends of friends that became friends, and and I got to know all the dealers, and and you know I'd buy around Lima, and then go up into the Andes and buy and. And it was a great time to be there. Yeah, because yeah. this is a lot of this furniture had probably been there since the late seventeen hundreds, mid mid eighteen hundreds. Oh yeah, and it was a, it was around a time when uh, they had just nationalized all of the, the big the ranches in Peru, and so a lot of families that had owned these big ranches since uh, colonial times. They gave all the land, land reform. They gave all the land away, you know, to the, the indigenous people around right. there, and and um, people they all moved to Lima or someplace else, and right. they left these houses full of furniture and and great things, and, and people would just go in and take whatever they wanted, and so you have a person that's a, a goat herder would have a 18th century Spanish colonial table or something, right. and and we bought a lot of stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> and so you would take it, you bring it back to your uh, gallery, which isn't really big, so you no. must have had buyers were kind of lined up. They were, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a big space, but when people heard that I was bringing in a load, they would they would just show up and I bet buy a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and you would. Um, cause you're in Santa Barbara, so this is all perfect for all those. Yeah. It, too. it really did fit into the, the style, the architecture and all that kind of thing. And have you seen that kind of material come back on the market now with the changes of taste? It, it, it is, it, it's, um, you know, like I hate to say it, but like a lot of younger people aren't interested in antiques very much now, but right. there's still a, you know, a hardcore group that they, they really like that stuff. And, and it's it's getting more popular again. People are going back to antiques. I sense that. And most of the houses that are being built in Santa Barbara now are redone. Are they going kind of toward a contemporary style? Some are. And I sometimes they call me in and they want to get rid of all the old... Everything. Funky, heavy Spanish furniture and, and replace it with something from uh, Restoration Hardware or something. Yeah. So it's... a. Uh -huh. Fine with me. Yeah, no, yeah. bring it on. Yeah, and so, but that business for you has still continued to, 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 to be strong enough. You can buy and sell the material. Yeah, I can, I can, I can. As long as buy it's price right. It was, it was real slow for a while, but now it's, it seems to, have, you know, Picked up a little come bit. back. So, being a dealer in Santa Barbara, has there's a lot of wealthy and incredibly famous people that live there. Yeah. Is there any stories you can share on any of that? Oh, you know, I've I've sold to a lot of celebrities, you know, and 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 it's more about uh, you know the people that buy really interesting old things it are they're they're kind of few and far between. Yeah. You know, it's just not people that are famous or. Oh no, I know. Yeah, they have to, they have to have some knowledge of history and or at least and, interest. Yeah, and so um, I've had a lot of interesting customers. Yeah. Yeah. So really. You don't great. want to share? <laughs> oh, Ellen De De DeGeneres has always been a good customer yeah, of ours. And, she seems and, like she'd just be a wonderful person. Yeah, she bought lots of stuff, and I sold stuff to Bob Dylan. And oh, that's you know, cool. What's he like? Well, I, I did probably never said more than ten words to oh. him, but his, <laughs> neither his, he said that to you, though. Yeah, his decorator, you know, did all the work, and right. and we sold him a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so that's fun. Yeah, so we, and does Ellen have an understanding of the material? You think? Uh, yeah, she she's got 
as you might imagine, she has very quirky tastes, yeah. and, and she buys she buys really interesting stuff. Yeah, but she buys what she likes. It sounds like she she, she she's very decisive. Yeah, and I she love buys that. What she likes. Yeah. And Those are my favorite clients. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know, if she sees something and it catches her attention, you know, it's walking out the door. Yeah, and I like the fact that they know what they like. Yeah. Yeah, whether it's a famous person or somebody who just knows exactly what they like. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's just easier for one thing, but it's also fun because you just, you can see it in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, uh-huh. she's, she just gets excited and she'll buy something that's, she'll buy, you know, a Native American thing, you know, and, and uh, she she actually told me a very funny story that uh, uh, she bought a big Apache basket from me. It was probably about 18 inches across, kind mm-hmm. of a deep, bowl right and um, she took it and she I, I asked her about a f- few years later like do you still have that basket I sold you and she could and she said I don't really you want to talk about it and I said what, what do you mean she said, I gave it to my mother oh said, my mother uh, planted a ficus tree in it <laughs> huh. Huh. that happens <laughs> yeah so <laughs> We've seen, we've all seen, we've all seen that. those things. Yeah. I've bought some great pots off people's front, you know, porches that had plants planted them. them. Yeah. yeah. I, I bought but a great a, Zuni pot with a fern growing in it one time, uh-huh. <laughs> but an Apache basket is not going to hold up no, as well. No, uh-huh. uh-huh. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So the, um, you've been doing this now for close to 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. And so how, what, what have you seen in that time frame? Because you saw the whole You've seen the whole arc of Native American going right. from no one knows what it is to it's really everybody wants it to the price structure going very, very high to the 209 recession where things change and then mm-hmm. in today. So where do, you, where do you see that in today's world? Um, it's, become, it's, it's become a very rarefied kind of uh, clientele on a certain level, like the really great things are still bringing a lot of money and the mediocre things are are just not bringing in any near where they were uh, 20 years ago yeah so and what things do you think are still highly collectible that you see great early beadwork great early a lot of people have really discovered early jewelry, you yeah. know, the really early hand-hammered coin ingot things, you know. And, um, I mean, back in the early 70s, almost nobody even knew what that meant. Right, so but nobody did, really. No, and there's so much, you Maybe know. Clay Lockett did. Yeah, Clay Lockett did, yeah. yeah. Don Percival did. Did you know Tanner, Joe Tanner, by the way? I I, I didn't really know him, yeah. but I knew, of course, knew yeah. of him, yeah. yeah. yeah he was a, he's a very nice guy, interesting yeah. guy. Yeah. This is an, that's another famous, for those who don't know, yeah. early trader, and Clary Lee Tanner was his wife, who was a very famous research person, and, and they lived in Tucson yeah. as well. So your business still is fairly strong, and you see things... Do you see the millennials buying any of this material at all, or the younger people? There's some, yeah, yeah. And my son's my son's in the business too, and he 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 knows how to appeal to people his age. And know. what's what's he doing differently than you're doing? Um, he he he'll buy the old stuff, you know. Um, but basically, he sells a lot of modernist things too. Yeah, mid-century you know, modern furniture. Mid-century and. And now he's he's real he's become real successful in the real realty business. So he's it's a he's found that it's a lot easier to make money in the realty yeah, business than is. the <laughs> antique business. So we may lose him to real estate versus he's he's edging in that direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think that's one of the things people don't realize. It's it's a really can be a great business for somebody if you mm. have the passion. Even though real estate in Santa Barbara, if you've got a four generation pedigree, yeah. is probably maybe can be a better, a better Helpful. line of work yeah. as long as you enjoy. Yeah, it. it's it, you know, and if you're in this business, you've got to you have to really have a passion for it because yeah. there's a lot of dead ends and and you've got to. It's it's hard work, you know. I mean, I I, I wake up every morning I'm still excited to see what I'm going to find that day right. 
and and I'll, I'll drive, do a 400 mile U turn with no problem to go look at something. You will. Yeah. Yeah. I still do that. And, yeah, that says something. Yeah. Uh, I have. I, I put it on my phone. Can you send me a picture? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I will do a 400 mile. You're right. Though. I guess I would do that. That's. Yeah. I mean, every mo. So much stuff's online now. Yeah. You know, and I. Uh, I like everybody else buy and sell online. So. Yeah, uh, has a, yeah. Well, and you have a nice Facebook too that I like to follow. Yeah, too. yeah. And even I, though you don't I, answer, I do Instagram. Even though you don't and... answer your messages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I do. Yeah, I yeah. know better. I, yeah. I must. I must admit. Yeah. So, what is there any great thing that you can remember, or a couple great things that you got that really still stick in your mind? Maybe you still have them. Um, yeah. There's been. I bought. Maybe the greatest Chumash basket. Oh, yeah, that's something. Yeah, so that's I, a very rare early California basket. Yeah. I, like I, bought it in, I bought it in Mexico. How interesting. Yeah. Do they know how it ended up in Mexico? Because these are Southern it, California basket makers. It came ba- with a, makers. Uh, an early Spanish family. Um, to um, One of the members of the family was actually a... Um, a uh, well, he was involved with the church mm-hmm. in, in California, and, and he brought it back at some point. Yeah, and, and so this is like a 1820s kind of thing, 1840s kind of thing? Yeah, it was. It, it could have even been late 19th century. I see. It was one of those baskets that was um, had a, uh, the, um, a Mexican real coin. As the uh, design? Yeah, as the design. Oh, you know, yeah. For the columns of... Hercules and everything. Has that one been published? It seems like many times. I was going to say, I think I've seen that a few dozen times. Yeah. It's in the Diker collection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the Charles Diker collection, Charles and Valley Diker, who uh, had a big show. I think it's done now at the Metropolitan. Yeah, recently. Yeah. yeah, At the Metropolitan. I do know that basket. That's a fan. So that's one of the great ones. Yeah. And so you were you in Mexico when you found it? I did. I was. And so what, what was it? Did, were you answering an ad, or how did, no, you, how did it come about? No, it was about? a very interesting story. I, um, uh, I was in Mexico City, and uh, I saw a sign that said, like, antique show or something. Right. I was wandering around, and, and I went in, and I met her. Uh, there was an old friend of mine there, and she said, invited me for, to come for cocktails at her house that evening mm-hmm. and to look at the... Chapultepec Castle, which was her view, and and um, through the very unlikely cir- circumstances, we ended up we were out having drinks on the the terrace, and the wind blew the door shut, and she brought me in through the laundry room, and okay. sitting on the the dryer was a <laughs> two mash basket with a bunch of balls of yarn on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it, oh, this is too good. And so, uh, anyway, uh, she was convinced. She, she I, I told her that, that basket's from Santa Barbara, where I live. And and, and uh, she said, no, it's from Peru. She said, my, my, um, my great-great-uncle was a viceroy to Peru, and he brought that basket from Peru. I was like, no, well, I don't know. So I, I, you know, she she wasn't ever going to believe me that it yeah, wasn't from right. Peru, and and she needed some money to pay off a American Express bill and sold me the basket. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably absolutely thrilled. Oh, she was astonished. Yeah, because you, you know could, her yarn basket. Had yeah, it real had value. no value. Her to Peruvian her. basket. It was just a basket. <laughs> you know, it was like yeah. Oh my gosh! And how long did you? Keep it. You must have kept it for a while just to I, enjoy it. I kept it for four or five years. Yeah, I yeah. would think. And then, um, you know, it was, I had kids in college and that kind of yeah. thing. And yeah, no. It we, went away. We've all sold great things yeah. for kids in college. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and now, I'd like to share when I first met you. I don't know if you remember when you first met me. I, I, I remember. I, 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 I kind of remember. I mean. It was yeah. a Hilton Inn. That's oh, where I yeah. first met you. Yeah. And you were doing the show. I wasn't doing the show. Um I don't know what year that would have been, 80, no, maybe 90, 91 or something. And um, I bought some rugs from you. Mm-hmm. You had brown hair at that time. Yeah, I did. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Things change. And everybody said, oh, because I, I kind of started to meet the people in the group. And they, oh, oh, he's always a good guy. Yeah, Michael's a good guy. Yeah. He'll always give you a good deal. And so 
And so we've done business together since that time, so almost 30 years. Yeah, I remember I remember I saw you at Santa Monica, the show at Santa yeah. Monica, and I was, I was outside, and the wind was blowing, and some kind of particle or something went in my eye, and somebody said, see, Mark, he's the doctor. <laughs> and you got like a little... Little oh, yeah. piece of paper or something, and got the thing out, and I was relieved and <laughs> still grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get you get those calls from Indian dealers periodically. Right. I already got one. Why, why I've been here? Can you look at my mom? <laughs> yeah, they're always on call. Like, you know, for the for the tribe. Yeah, you yeah. Know, for us. Exactly. And so, what would you? Anything else you'd like to kind of share about maybe your business and you know the ride that you've taken? Yeah, I, you know, I. I it's it's kind of confusing times in the you know Indian art business you know in a way um, it's uh, it's very difficult to you know in the old days there was so much stuff that would just come out from old families and that just those through a generational thing those things just don't happen very much anymore the old collections so you really have to be you know looking at every source to find things and, and and they are still out there but you have to really dig deep and so finding material has been harder for you it is yeah it is. and most of your so a good percent of your material has come because people come to you a lot of it is yeah. you know i still have uh my family kind of had a wide circle of friends in santa barbara and i still have friends of theirs or their you know offspring or whatever mm -hmm. come come in and bring bring me things and I buy a wide variety of things I mean I buy cowboy things and Spanish things yeah. and all kinds of stuff so and art you know oh yeah no like I'm, you do yeah no you're just yeah. exactly yeah how about Edward Brain did you ever meet Edward Brain um I never uh, met him I um I shortly after he died which I think was in 54 maybe mm -hmm. um my mother took took me to his house because his his um, I think his wife's name was Lucille. Mm -hmm, that's right. And um, she used to buy Edward Borain etchings as Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. And they were you know they were eight dollars. Yeah. And, you know she picked through them and we kept a lot of them. We had a lot of them in our house. And, 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 but there was a lot of stuff hanging around in that house. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so he did, Dick, Dixon and Marine took a trip in 1901 from Oakland, California. And they went for about five months. They took six horses and went a thousand miles on wow. horseback to draw, and to, basically to draw and draw real mm -hmm. cowboys. Yeah. And the other thing that Dixon and Marine, they're good friends, clearly. After, you know, five months on the trail, you're going to be good friends. But... They got married under the same tree, under Charles Loomis's tree. Oh, Dixon yeah. Dixon got married in 1905, and Breen got married in, to Lucille, I think, in 1921, under that same tree. So there's a connection. And you know per Percival. <laughs> oh, yeah, Percival. So, and, and I mean... You probably knew Davidson, too, didn't you? I knew Davidson, yeah. Yeah, so he's Davidson. the expert of, yeah. of Breen yeah, material. Yeah, I, I, I met with him many times, and yeah. we did some business together. Did he like Native American material, too, or was he... He didn't seem to care too much about it. And uh, Boreen had a, a lot of good American Indian mm, material, that makes sense, right. and and I remember some years after his death, they had an auction, you know, and they sold a bunch of things out of the house. It was like a, a local auctioneer, and of course, it wasn't like now, and everything's online, and everybody knows about it. Right. So there were some good things. I, I remember I bought a a, a woman's. Um, you know, bayetta dress, one half at a time. They went as two separate oh, rugs. That's hilarious. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you had to buy the first half. Yeah, and then bought the second one. And well, uh, if you ever wondered how those got broken up, you always wonder, oh, God, where's the other one? Oh, well, that's exactly that's, how. Yeah, it happened. people didn't know what they were. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, <laughs> did you have to pay more for the second one? Uh, I I think it was I probably paid seventy five for one and maybe. A hundred for the other. Yeah. But, so and we're talking hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so. those are you know fifteen thousand dollar objects now probably. Yeah. There was I remember there was a big Zia pot that I really had to fight over to get it for three hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, and, and, and when what year? This one must have been early though. Yeah, that was pretty early. That was um, that was before I had a shop. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. Before sixty nine. Yeah. Yeah. 
So some reason this material has always called you and it still has. Oh it's, yeah, you know. it still does. And I wake up every morning excited to see what's, what's out there. See, yeah, that's, see, that's the deal of the true, you know, Indian trader, you know, the people that love this material. And you probably have dozens of friends that are native American friends too. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, 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 and I knew a lot of people in my days of going out to the reservation yeah. and buying, buying all that pond, you yeah. know, and just the way it really worked. And, you know, it was really, it was really, it was really, a, a they banned you know, pond, right. you know, um, shortly, somewhere in the later, later seventies or something, right. I think it was, but it was really a useful tool for the, for the Navajo because it was, um, y you know, you, you could, Get what you needed, you know, your your coffee, your, your right. beans, your tomatoes, your whatever, and 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 you just have to, you know, leave your object there, and most of the people would get it back. But yeah, you know, the, the, that was a good way to get money. It yeah. was like a short-term loan, better than yeah. payday. Yeah, it was. I, sure. I used to read, you know, I mean, sometimes I bought pond pawn for very cheap, and it'd be, it'd have a card on it with like you know one rope, one you know saddle strap one right. cinch one one uh, uh you know a can of tomatoes of back tobacco and right. and, and so it all added up to you know like twelve dollars or something and yeah. and they'd sell this this tab necklace for twelve dollars yeah because that's what but then in those days that was a fair price yeah it yeah. was i think people have to realize too that things were Things were way really different. cheap. Yeah, yeah, way different. Yeah, and, and even twelve dollars if it was, you know, if they were selling it in the, you know, fifties or sixties, depending on when it was, fifties or forties, it still wasn't horrible. No, it was. You know, we just don't, we don't realize that what you could get for twelve dollars. Yeah, like, you could get a lot more for twelve dollars. Yeah, it wasn't the same. It's more like five hundred or something, or even more. Yeah, yeah. It was. I remember. Um, at one point, it was. Probably in the, in the some more time in the late '60s, '67 maybe. I a guy told me that he'd gone to an auction and an Indian basket had gone for two hundred dollars, and I was like, "Whoa, really?" Was, yeah, how's that possible? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Uh, well, anything else you want to say, or we, you want to go back and start looking for more? Yeah, I think great we'll go objects. looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Michael, you're one of the greats in this business. Well, and thank you. We need thank your you. expertise and all the things you've done. You really have a great knowledge, and uh, you probably need to publish a book if you haven't on jewelry. Have you published a book yet on jewelry? I haven't, but I'm. You know, a lot of people have talked to me about it. Yeah, and, it's time. And uh, I think I probably yeah could write a fair book on it. Yeah, no, I know you could. Just your history with pictures and things would be fantastic. Yeah. So, all right, I'll yep. let you sell Michael Haskell. He's in Santa Barbara. I've been to his gallery there many times. It's really a cool gallery. There's always something there that'll catch your eye. I know it does mine. So go check him out when you're there. And thanks again for Thanks, coming. Mark. All right. It's been fun. We'll see you. All right. All right. All right. We'll go shop now. See you. <laughs> we need your support for the Medicine Man Gallery channel. So make sure to click the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video, which we do every morning on Wednesday and Friday. See you soon.